Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Rabbi. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here for such an important event. So thank you to all the organizers for including me. On April 24th last year, there was an anti-Israel rally in downtown Tor Toronto at which the participants could be heard shouting, God is great, after it was announced that Israel had been hit by two rockets. Such hate-filled events are not uncommon in Toronto, as we witness each year at the Al-Quds Day Parade. Now, most of you know that Al-Quds Day is an annual international event that is held on the last Friday of Ramadan each year. Now, ironically, Ramadan is supposed to be a month of peace and prayer. However, we have seen Hamas, Hezbollah, and other terrorist organizations weaponize this month to carry out atrocities against the civilian population of Israel and Jews worldwide. The tremors of this are felt all over the Western world in the form of this Al-Quds Day Parade, which was instituted by Ayatollah Khomeini. Why did Khomeini institutionalize Al-Quds Day? And what is the largest significance? This is what I want to share with you. After being in exile for 14 years, Khomeini returned to Iran triumphant in February 1979. He could have been satisfied by being in power and control, which he was, with 20% of 1.6 billion Muslims who are Shias following him. But that was not enough for his narcissist ego. He wanted other Muslims to follow him. He wanted all Muslims to follow him. So he decided to export the revolution. But what could he use as a cause that would rally Muslims around him? He chose Palestine as his cause because he knew that the Arab world would definitely support him and when the Arabs did, so would other Muslims. Therefore, Khomeini instituted Al-Quds Day and cleverly chose the last Friday of Ramadan, which ironically again is one of the holiest days of the year for Muslims globally. It is actually a day for reflection and prayer but Khomeini twisted it out of proportion, asking for rallies to take place globally on this last Friday of Ramadan. So Khomeini effectively politicized Islam for his own evil agenda. And today, Al-Quds Day takes place all over the world. Now there is nothing presented at this rally that is even close to compassion, kindness, tolerance, interfaith or reflection? Do they talk about the persecution of the Uyghurs in China? No. Do they speak about persecution of minorities in Pakistan? No. Do they speak about the lack of women's rights in their own communities? No, of course they don't. This is pure, undiluted Jew hatred that speaker after speaker spouts along with waving Hamas and Hezbollah flags and other insightful banners. Essentially, Al-Quds Day is a madman's vision. This event has been taking place in Toronto for many years, despite protests over the hate-filled rhetoric and incitement towards violence that always accompanies the rally. Now, politicians globally have been brainwashed into accepting this disturbing phenomena. And we need to ask the question, why are Western leaders succumbing to this brainwashing? I'll tell you, because the Islamist organizations twist it to give it a religious flavor, and Western politicians who have adopted the woke culture wholly, plus political correctness, are terrified of speaking out in case they are labeled Islamophobes. The second question we want to ask is who funds this? There is an abundance of money being funneled by Iran for universities and Islamist organizations in North America. Now for your information, I'll give you a bit of trivia. 
Shia Muslims have a tax called khums, which is supposed to be sent to the ayatollahs in Iran. It's a religious tax, so there is no restriction on the amounts. It's 20% of the acquired wealth of the Shias, and by the ways, the Shias are a very affluent community. Now here's the twist. Shia Imams in the West have very cleverly convinced the religious authorities that they need to use the tax for betterment of Muslims where they live. So can you even begin to imagine the billions of dollars that are accessible for anti-Jewish agendas? While some Muslims believe that following a legal edict by an ayatollah, they believe in this, there is absolutely no official clergy in Islam. Muslims are supposed to believe in direct connection with the Almighty without the need of an intercessor. Besides, the institution of ayatollahs is only 100 years old, so how can they claim legitimacy? When they take it upon themselves to impose their ideas on Muslim masses, they are not divine, and neither are they sanctioned by Islam. So they are in no position to promote violence and hate against anyone. Now whether the issues about the conflict in the Middle East are there, and granted they may be more than few, they need to be discussed civilly and respectfully as is being done through the Abraham Accords. If the issues are specifically about Israel, then the streets of Toronto is, are not the place to show hate and disrespect, which is what happens exactly on Al-Quds Day rallies. Now I speak from personal experience, having observed an Al-Quds Day rally at Queen's Park in Toronto a few years ago, after which I swore I will never be seen there again. I just went to make sure that everything I had heard was true, and it was. I was shocked that this rally was allowed to take place on government property, and doubly shocked to see busloads of students being brought in. Can you imagine the brainwashing of these young people as they hear this hate and propaganda? And we've heard the stories today from students and from Daniel about the kind of mindset the students have at universities. Can you blame them when they're being brainwashed into this hateful agenda? While I support freedom of expression for everyone, the Al-Quds Day rally is nothing but undiluted hate against Jews being spouted by every speaker. And as such, it should be banned. Can, yes, for sure. I've written about this, I've spoken about this over the years, and I relentlessly say it should be banned. Can you imagine the reaction if a similar anti-Muslim rally was held? Let me tell you, governments would fall. And I can say this to you openly and honestly without being labeled an Islamophobe, although they have tried to do that. A friend once told me, what starts with the Jews doesn't end with the Jews. So we have to collectively, every speaker today has spoken about the importance of working together, regardless of where we come from. When we love peace and we want to eliminate hate, we have to come together, put aside our differences and support each other. And let me assure you that at the Council of Muslims Against Anti-Semitism, we hundreds of percent support you in every way that we can. And the reason for this is the security and the future of our children and grandchildren. If we let hate flourish on our streets, we will become a nation of haters and will defeat what Canada stands for, peace and freedom. I'll share a small personal story. In May 2001, I wrote an article for the National Post about violence perpetrated against <clears throat> two young people who happened to be like my own children, two young Jewish brother, a brother and a sister, warning in that article that the, if the roots of anti-Semitism are based on hate, and if hate fests are allowed to take place on our streets, then we are headed in the wrong direction. After my article was published, I received a message 
from a member of the Sufi center, which I had attended for many years, and some of you have visited that Sufi center with me. They sent me a message saying, and I quote, not happy at all with your recent article about Israel and Palestine. You are not one of us. The stench of anti-Semitism was strong. And I was shocked, I was hurt, I was dismayed, because this veiled threat, and you have to be a part of my faith to understand the underlying implication, the results of which can be life-threatening. What was more astonishing was that it came from the Sufis, when Sufism is the mystic path of Islam and is known for its tolerance, moderation, and inclusivity. inclusivity. What I wanted to share with you, that every one of us who tries to stand up and speak the truth is pushed back. So we are together in this. Statistics tell us that anti-Semitic incidents are on the rise in Canada, and Jew hatred is on the rise around the world. It thrives on hate. So if there is hate being spouted in, the in our streets, shouldn't our government take notice and do something about it, like yesterday? Thank you very much.